Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for tuning in. As you see from the title, today I'm going to show you from start to finish a very detailed video on how to do your makeup. Now, this look I would consider somewhat glam, but it's actually really easy and there aren't that many products used. So if you're new to makeup, I really believe that you can follow this tutorial and you'll be able to recreate this look. Just remember, take your time, make sure that you have time and you're not in a rush so you don't get frustrated. But if you wanna see how I got this look, then stay tuned and keep on watching. So as usual, we are starting off with a clean face. My face is heavily moisturized because I'm peeling from the weekend on vacation. I got a lot of sun. And of course, as I keep saying, the dryness from the Accutane. So if y'all see any spots that look like they're peeling, that's what it's from. What do you need for makeup for a beginner? Some of this stuff you need, some of it you don't. I'm gonna do a full face but I'll kind of point out the stuff that I think you need versus the stuff that I personally just like to use. We'll start with the primer. I personally think that everyone should use a primer, especially if you want your makeup to last for a long time. It helps it to adhere to your face and it helps to form a barrier between your skin and the makeup. So I think primers are good. There are hydrating primers, mattifying, smoothing for blurring your pores, whatever you need. I'm going to use the Revlon Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Makeup and Skincare Primer. I literally have cocoa butter on my face right now. So I'm going to try to use products that are not overly mattifying because I do not need it right now. So I like to let that sit for a little while just to make sure that it has time to set and that my makeup is not just mixing in with it. I want this to set by itself. So give that a couple minutes and then you can move on to your foundation. Now, as you saw from the title, I did say that this is going to be a very detailed video. So there are some steps that I'm gonna tell you about that I'm not gonna do right now, but if you have oily skin or you need your makeup to last long, then I know that these will help you. So for starters, if you have really oily skin and your makeup tends to break apart on you, one thing that you can do is put powder over your primer to help set it. Again, I'm not doing that today. I'm dry right now, so I don't want anything to keep me dry. But you want to use a translucent powder or something that is really, really fine that is just going to blend into your skin and it's going to melt and not be patchy. I like the Laura Mercier powder. In the drugstore, the Maybelline Fit Me Loose powder is also a really good option. I'm gonna do a mix of drugstore and high-end today, but you can use whatever you have. To start off with foundation, since we're doing just beginner makeup, I'm not gonna color correct and all that. The foundation I'm gonna use is the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Hydrating Foundation, and I'm using the shade 4.05. This is what it looks like. This is one that I've had in my drawer for a while that I've not been able to wear because I wasn't dark enough and now I am. So I'm gonna start with just one pump and I'm gonna concentrate that in the areas of my face where I have the most hyperpigmentation. So as you all know, this is mostly where it is and then I just put whatever excess on my forehead. So I just put one pump on my finger I start on my cheeks, put some on my chin, and then a little bit on my forehead. Because I'm going to use concealer to highlight, I don't want to put a lot of product in that area. I'm going to try to keep this as minimal as possible. I like to pat my foundation in first like this to help keep the coverage. So the first layer, I always do this. And as you can see, this is not completely covering everything, which is okay because you can always go back in with a concealer and spot correct the other areas that really need it. Or you can leave it like this and just put powder 
or since I only used one pump, you can always go in with another pump or half a pump, whatever you need for foundation. So I'm gonna use a little more foundation, again, just in my problem areas. But as you can see, it's a pretty good match for me. And I'm happy that it is a hydrating formula. So I'm gonna take another pump. Again, guys, this is totally your preference. If you don't need this much, or you want to use a BB cream or tinted moisturizer or whatever, if you don't have as much to cover as I do, use what you need, what you like. But I'm just showing you the application steps. Okay, so the next step is your concealer. Now, the reason we use concealer, when you look at your face with no makeup on, your face is just not flat, all one color. You have high points of your face, your cheekbones are a little more accented. We're doing this just to cancel and make everything a flat, even canvas. But now you wanna add dimension back to your face. So you go in with a concealer that is one or two shades lighter than your skin tone. Now, if you want more of a glam look, you use two to three shades. Some people do more than that to each their own. But for a beginner, you really don't need to do that much. I have this Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in the shade Butterscotch. I haven't used this in a while, so I'm gonna use this today. You have two options to blend this out. You can use a sponge or you can use a brush. I have both of these. I, Depending on what I'm doing, if I'm in a hurry, um, I'll go in with the brush. It helps smooth it out faster and keep some of the coverage. And then I'll just lightly go over it with the sponge just to press everything in. But I know a lot of times on Instagram you see where people draw like these big, big triangles and use like two and three pumps of concealer. We're not doing all that. I want to brighten up the center part of my forehead right here because that part is normally bright on our face. And then I have dark circles here. So I'm putting just mainly a little bit there. And then I'm also going to use this as my eye primer, so I'm putting it on my eyelids. You can get a designated eye primer if you want to. Totally up to you, but I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you. So if you have a concealer and you feel like it doesn't cover enough, you can let it sit for a little while so that it'll dry down and it won't spread out as much so you won't lose the coverage. So I just like to fan it to let it dry down a little bit. And then I'm gonna do use my brush and I'm just going to start in the middle. And just gonna brush that. I, I like to use this to help smooth out the edges and then I just pat in the areas that I need the most coverage. So, excuse me, my nose is itching. Around the edges first to help smooth that out and blend into your foundation and then pat in the areas where you need more coverage. Okay, so there we have that. Make sure you kind of want to look down to make sure you get under your eyes really well because you don't want the concealer to settle in your fine lines underneath your eyes and then get creasy. If you don't have them, lucky you, but I do. So we're just gonna pat that in. And I forgot to do the bridge of my nose. I am, I always do the bridge of my nose. Totally optional, but if you just want your nose to look a little slimmer, you can do that. Okay, so you just put a little bit on the bridge of your nose and then you just want to lightly blend that into the top of your forehead and then down. And try to just concentrate it right in the middle of your nose. And I'm patting to keep that coverage there. Totally optional, but I like to go over it. My sponge is wet. I like to go over it with my sponge and just press it in to make sure that it's not just sitting on the top of my skin. You can also put some on your chin, but this is why you see a lot of very simple makeup looks, but the women just look really sculpted and their cheekbones are defined. 
this is how they get that. Now, once you're happy with the way that looks, then you're going to go in with your setting powder. Now, I'm going to use the Laura Mercier powder. This, I feel like, doesn't dry me out as much. This is the original translucent. She does have more shades now. So if you need a darker color, if you're a darker complexion, you may want to check that out. But like I said, there are drugstore options that are way cheaper that you can get. It's just I have this one and this is what I want to, I want to use it up. I pour a little bit of the powder into the cap. And then I'm going to take my sponge. I feel like doing this helps it to melt better into the skin and you're going to tilt your head down but look up so you can get underneath your eyes and just pat the powder in there and I am not baking I'm just putting this to set my face so as you can see that has blended in and if you look at the difference you see how this is still shiny and then this side is more mattified but it's still highlighted that's what we want I'm also putting it in the corner of my nose here because that tends to break apart on me. And then anywhere else that you put concealer, you want to set. So I'm putting it on my forehead, putting it down the bridge of my nose. And it's okay if this gets a little messy because you're going to wipe it all away anyway. And then on my chin, it doesn't have to be precise like you see. How I have this everywhere it's not messed up it'll be fine so don't freak out the biggest advice I can give if you're new to makeup sit down and practice when you have time don't try to do something new when you're rushing out the door because you're gonna get flustered you're gonna get aggravated or if you feel like something doesn't look right you're gonna end up starting all over or just get get aggravated and not want to do it so make sure you have adequate time to sit down and do your makeup when you want to practice okay so now we're going to go over the rest of my face with powder you all know one of my favorite mattifying powers powders is the l'oreal infallible pro matte i have it here i'm going to lightly use this just because i know it helps everything stay in place but i'm not going to pack it on like i normally do because i don't need mattifying right now so I'm just barely lightly dipping my brush. I'm using an e.l.f. powder brush. You can use a bigger fluffier brush, whatever you want to use. And I'm just sweeping this and patting into the other areas that are not already set with powder. Also, if you need a little more coverage, then this can help give you more coverage. I'm brushing this down the sides of my nose where I did not put highlight, did not put concealer to help set that part of my foundation. And now I'm just gonna go and buff around the edges where the darker foundation and the lighter concealer were to help that blend together. So now you still see that I'm highlighted, but there's no sharp line right here of where my concealer stopped and then my foundation went. And you also see all the places where I had the powder messed up are not messed up anymore. So. Like I said, as long as you don't put too much, you don't go crazy, everything will be fine. So that's it for our powder fit products. And guys, this is just very general base makeup. I never stop, it's just this, but if you just wanted something to even your skin out and to give you a little bit of highlight, you can stop here. I personally like to contour a little bit. I like to bronze, so we're gonna do that. And I'm also going to do a simple eye look for you guys. As far as contour goes, you have several options. Being that I've already used concealer to highlight my face, I don't really feel the need to contour a lot. But if you do want to do that to help bring more dimension into your face, I like using palettes that are kind of all in one for beginners instead of buying a separate contour a separate bronzer i personally like this la girl blush collection this is in spice and i use the dark powder here and i take a brush you can either use one that is a little more tapered like this one or you can use a powder brush that has a dome on it like this one. Um, 
it just depends on how precise you want it this I'm not doing really precise so I'm gonna use the bigger brush and I start off at my forehead and I'm just going to start going around my hairline if you got a big forehead this is how you cover it up a little bit take some attention away from it you want to make sure you put powder at your temples because when you see a skeleton, a skeleton has like the forehead shape, then the temples are indented a little bit, then they have cheekbones, then this is indented a little bit. We're just going over where they would have the indention. So cheekbones. And again, this is more of a bronzer for me than it is a contour, but it's a little warmer. A contour color is going to be something that's a little more cool tone. So for example, in this NARS palette, you see here that I have a darker and a lighter brown at the top. The lighter brown is actually more of a cool tone. You see it doesn't look as red as this one even though it's darker. So if I go in my cheekbones and I'll show you with the lighter one and I'll take the more dense brush that's a little more contoured and thin and I'm going to go into that powder. So you see here going into the lighter one and then I apply that in my cheekbones even though it's lighter look what that does because it's a cooler color you use cooler colors to contour because it helps to give you a shadow and then you use the warmer color to bronze but so now you see my cheekbones have a little more definition even though that powder was cooler I mean even though that powder was lighter and then I just like to go on the sides of my nose to help further accent the bridge and make it look a little slimmer. And if you see some spots where it looks like your powder is not blended well, just take your brush that you use for your face powder and just go back over everything again. So this will kind of help blend everything together. I always recommend if you're going to contour with a darker powder, go back over it with your warmer bronzer and that'll help blend it out. This is what we have. You can see my contour, the little bit of darker here, a little bit of darker here, but overall everything is blended very well. That is the biggest thing. That's why I said do it when you can take your time. Next step is blush. One of my favorite blushes of all time to use is this Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur in Mauve Sunrise. I absolutely love this. I'll try to show it without color washing it out. Um, beautiful kind of berry pink mauve. It feels like a cream but dries down like a powder. I'm going to take that and but if you have a blush that you feel like is too pigmented, it's too red, when you dip in you can tap your brush off and then you want to actually start back here because if you put too much powder back here, it's easier to blend that in with your bronzer than it is if you put too much right here and then you have a big red spot on the front of your face. So start off back here and then work your way to the front. Blush you want to concentrate right above where you contoured and mix it in with your bronzer. You don't want to just put a circle right here on your face. We're not clowns. We're not going to the circus. We want everything to just look like we're flushed. We've been at the beach. We have been at the beach. We got a little sun and everything just looks youthful and glowy and put together. That is what we're going for. The next step is completely optional. We've already highlighted because we use the lighter powder and the concealer. If you want to use a dedicated highlighter to really make your cheekbones pop, you want to get a small tapered brush. This is an e.l.f. small tapered brush. As you can see, it comes to a little point. This palette comes with a highlighter in it. You want to find something that is shimmery, but it complements your skin tone. This one is a kind of gold champagne. Elf also makes some really good highlighters and I'll show you those. I have Precious Petals. 
This says this is their Mega Glow formula. This one is a light gold. And then they also have Crown in My Canopy, which is a little more bronze. So if you're of a darker complexion, you can use this one. But both of them, I'll swatch them for you real quick, are very shimmery. So this one is Crown in My Canopy. This one is Precious Petals. So you can see the difference in the shades and the undertones. So if you're of a darker complexion, this would look gorgeous. And then if you're a lighter complexion, you can also use this one. I am going to use Precious Petals, the lighter. And I'm just going to dip my brush in. And you want to apply this right at the high point of your cheekbone. So just lightly brush it. So as you can see, now my cheekbones look even more sculpted because there's dark here and then extra light shining here. So same thing on the other side. And you want to do this in a C shape. So I concentrate the start of the most of the product there. And then I go along my eye socket and on my brow bone a little bit. Some people like to do their forehead, their chin, all this other. I don't do all that. I do do a little bit on the bridge of my nose and on my upper lip. If you want to make your lips look extra pouty, you do that. But that's it. We're not going to go crazy with highlighter. Again, this is an optional step. You could have stopped before we got here. Totally up to you. You can't stop before blush. Put your blush on. It makes you look good. It makes your, your face look flush. Like you just went for a run and you come back and you look youthful. Put your blush on. It helps. It makes a difference. I promise. My face is done at this point. This is everything that I do for a full face of makeup. As far as eyebrows go, you know I have a tutorial already on eyebrows. So you can go back and check that out. You can do brow pomade. You can do powder. You can do pencil. Whatever you want to do. I am just going to use my pencil. And I'm not going to talk through this. If you want to know how to do eyebrows, go watch my video. So now for eyeshadow. We're not going to do anything crazy. And I wanted to use something affordable. I showed you guys this in another haul that I did. This is my Wet n Wild Comfort Zone Eyeshadow Palette. And this is pretty neutral. But it gives you the option for some pops of color if you want it. Now, if you are not good at eyeshadow, you don't feel comfortable doing eyeshadow, one thing I will suggest, if you've done all this, the natural contour of your eye, you normally have a crease right here. So if you saw my five minute makeup, even when I'm in a rush, I make sure to put at least my contour powder in my crease because it just helps to define that since we canceled everything out with the concealer so i'm gonna go in with their transition shade here at the bottom i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna put that in my crease on both sides and i'm just gonna show you what a difference that makes it just helps to bring everything together you have blush on that brought color to your face you have the bronzer on that brought color to your face and then your eyes look muted out. We don't want that. And you just want to put the main part of the color right in that crease. And if you can't tell where it is right now, if I look up, you can see that right here is the natural curve of where my eye is. That's where we want to put the majority of the color and then blend out around it. So if you can't, you're not sure where your lid space is, where your crease is, look up like that. So you see the difference that makes? It also helps my eye look a little lifted. But again, guys, this is something if you don't want to do an eyeshadow look or you don't have an eyeshadow palette, this is something that you can do with your bronzer. And then if you really want to make your eyes pop and you don't have an eyeshadow palette, 
but you have a face palette that has the highlighter in it, you can go ahead and put your highlighter on your lids and that'll make your eyelids pop. So there we have it. This has a little more red. It's not a cool tone. So it's not so much as that we wanna create a contour, but we're actually just bringing warmth. Now, because the look that I have right now is a warmer look, my blush is a warm color because it's a little more red and the color in my crease is more bronze. It's more warm, almost reddish brown. I'm gonna stick with that same type of color for my lid. I'm just gonna take this color here. It's actually a pretty light gold, kind of a light brownish gold. So it's not gonna be like a really stark color. It's just going to help our eyelids pop a little bit but not be too much of a contrast. If you prefer to use a matte, you can do like I did in my soft glam look and put a matte color, or you can put no color, all options. So that just, you see how that just amped it up a little bit? Nothing crazy. I'm just going back in with the transition color and I'm gonna put a little bit more out here just to help darken it. I'm actually gonna go back to our NAR to the NARS palette that I used for my face because I want to have a little deeper color on my outer V. Just a little bit to give it a little more definition. Again, guys, this is all optional. I'm just showing you and I'm being very detailed with each part of where you can stop or if you want to keep going. I just like doing this because I feel like it helps my eyelids stand out a little more. So not a lot. And that's all we're gonna do for the eyes. Now for eyeliner, I personally like liquid eyeliner, but if you want, if you decided to stop at just something in your crease, You'll want to go in with a brown liner. You don't, you can go in with a black. It's totally up to you. Whatever color you want to use. If you want more natural, go with a brown. If you want it more defined, go with a black. There are some days I will do like bare minimum on my face and I'll still do a big wing just because I like to play up my eyes. I am going to line my eyes. You can do this without doing a wing. If you're not comfortable drawing a wing, you don't have to draw a wing. Biggest thing is, is when you line your eyes, you just want to keep the color as close to your lash line as possible. So this is what it looks like with no wing at all. And I'm gonna just go I personally, on my bottom lash line, I don't like to go all the way in to my inner corner because I feel like it makes my eyes look a little more closed and smaller. So I just like to put a little bit right here on the outside to help connect to my liner at the top. And then I stop about halfway through. So that's what I do for my bottom lash line, and that is just to help everything be more connected. So now moving on to mascara. I always suggest putting on mascara because if you are tired, it will help make your eyes look more open and help you look more awake. So it's always a good idea to put on mascara. There are different shades, but I like my lashes to look really dark and thick, so I always use black. And you see people will wiggle like this because they want to make sure their eyelashes don't clump together. So it's separating them at the base and then helping to distribute the product evenly. 
I'll also sometimes use a tubing mascara. Those are really good because they don't smudge and they help your lashes look longer because there's fibers that wrap around your lashes and stretch out to make them look longer. If your lashes are straight, you can also buy an eyelash curler and curl them. My lashes are not straight, so I don't do that. And then you can put some at the bottom. You just have to be careful with this because you want to try to make sure that you do not touch your bottom lash and get this underneath your eyes. Last thing are your lips. So you have options. If you want to use color, use color. If you want to go nude, go nude. Gloss, lipstick, whatever. If you want something that's going to be long wearing, I always suggest drawing outlining your lips first and then you can even fill them in with a pencil and just put gloss and that'll help it last longer but the pencil helps your color last longer for darker complexions you can't go wrong with brown liner because you can mix that with a nude and make it just look like the prettiest combination ever you can mix it with a little more red but it helps just to define plus a lot of times we have discoloration around our lips. So this just helps everything to blend better. If you're the type of person who likes to re wear really light nudes, don't walk around looking like you've been eating chalk. Trace the outside of your lips first and then fill in a little bit, I'll show you. And then go in with your nude and blend it with your fingers. So as you can see, I've outlined the bottom and I've gone in a little bit towards the center. If you have smaller lips, you can overdraw a little bit to make your lips look a little bigger. Just make sure it's even. You see, I'm gonna fill this in a little bit. So now that is my liner. And I'm going to take a really nice light nude and show you how to make that blend. Right now, my lips look dark, but when I go in with this ABH color, I'm gonna put it just in the center and then I'm gonna blend it out. Could you imagine me putting that all over my whole lip with no liner? No. So just in the center, blot it to the top lip, and then take your finger, and blend it together. And there you have it. Now, that is personally for this look, I think a little too cool. And also with my lips being chapped, I want something a little more moisturizing. So I'm gonna go over that with a tinted lip oil that I have from e.l.f. and it is in Nude Kiss. You're barely gonna see it, but it's just gonna help put a little more pink back into the color and also not be too matte. And this is it. Now this is a completely full face of makeup. Step by step, detailed, telling you what you could keep in, what you can leave out, only thing we didn't do that you could do if you really wanted to make this glam is add lashes, which I decided not to do today. Not necessary, but totally up to you if you want to. Comment below, tell me which, what you think. Is this a look that you feel like you'd be able to wear? Let me know if you think it was detailed enough. If you feel like you could watch the video and try to do it on yourself. If you do, let me know how it turned out. Post it on Instagram, tag me at Miss Barbell Barbie. I would love to see the looks that you guys recreate. I hope this video was informative and it helps you feel more comfortable trying to do your makeup. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.